Hello, everyone. Please take a seat. The hush descended. Can you see me through the, uh, the smoke and the lights? I'm not sure what's that for, what that's for, but uh, I feel like there should be some kind of Las Vegas show happening rather than a tourism conference, but we'll do our best to make it entertaining. Uh, welcome to the 11th Baltic Sea and Latvian Tourism Forum here at uh, Ziemelblasma which couldn't have a more appropriate name, meaning Northern Lights, for those of you who didn't know it already. Uh, my name is Mike Collier. As you've probably registered already, uh, I'm British, but don't hold it against me. Um, I'm the English language editor with uh, Latvian Public Media's uh, English language service. Uh, I'm a writer and so on as well, and I've been living in Latvia for about 11 years now. So I'll be acting as moderator, trying to uh, keep everything on time and get speakers who are much more interesting and dynamic than myself up on stage to do all the work for me. Uh, talking about keeping it on time, I'm already two minutes late, so apologies for that. Uh, we usually begin these things with a little bit of uh, technical information. So the working language of the conference is English. Uh, if you need translation into Latvian, it's available at the back by the doors. So, ja jums vajag tulkojums latviešu valodai, ņemsiet austiņas no mūsu draugiem pie durvīm lūdzu. No, vien pats mit gār, jau. A uh, couple of other uh, things, uh, Wi-Fi, everyone needs Wi-Fi, we can't live without it, it's one of the major things required, sorry, no, oh. one of the things we require along with food, water, so forth, um, the codes are all over the place, I think it's not a very cryptic code, so you should be able to get Wi-Fi, no problem at all. Uh, we're also going to be discussing technology at length during this conference, and so we've got a couple of other uh, digital age innovations. We'll be accepting questions from the floor, and indeed from anyone who's watching online uh, via Slido. You probably know what that is. If you don't, Google Slido. You, it'll, it's a platform that will enable you to uh, submit questions, and, and at various times during the course of the next two days, we'll display questions uh, and comments, so if you want to say something a little bit naughty or you want to say what an amateur the moderator is, feel free to do that and it's probably more likely to get read out than uh, a question about tourism. Uh, we also have the Magnetic Latvia app, which you can download. Like Wi-Fi, we can't live without apps, can we? Um, for those who maybe are wond wondering about the name, Latvia is not actually magnetic. Uh, the magnetic pole is somewhere in, near Baffin Island in Canada, but it is a phenomenon that every few thousand years the poles do switch. So it is entirely possible that by the end of this conference, uh, Latvia will be magnetic. The other thing we can't live without is a hashtag. So the official hashtag, and I've double checked this with the organizers for today's event, is hashtag BSLTF 2018. Very, very memorable hashtag, I'm sure you'll agree. So I tried to come up with something that could help us remember this hashtag a little bit more easily. Some little rhyme or acronym that we can use. I came up with a couple of suggestions. One would be boys sometimes lie to females. 2018 has been known to happen. Uh, if we're feeling more in the sort of motivational mood, if you think this is going to be some kind of TEDx uplifting talk, being silly leads to failure, 2018. Or my favorite one, and the one which probably applies to me the most, hopefully not to any of the other speakers, bullshit loves talentless fakers, BSLTF 2018. Right, we've got two days, or kind of one day split over two days so that we can have a little bit of fun in between. Day one, the main theme is creation versus preservation. So the old dichotomy about if we all want to go somewhere and uh, see something, do we ruin it in that very act? And day two, uh, digitalization versus preservation. So it seems that everyone's ganging up on preservation. 
Um, but this gives us a couple of, uh, couple of themes around which to think. So maybe you can get thinking uh, along those lines and Slido or message or do whatever else you need to do to comment on those things and we'll bring them up behind us. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that we have uh, various parallel uh, events will be happening in some of the other rooms and one of the rooms is an info point as well which is uh, dedicated to giving you all the brochures and other materials that you, uh, you need so it's a good place to find out information, set up meetings and so forth. And as a journalist I've got to say that the main criterion that we judge these sorts of events on is what sort of pen and paper do we get given and I've got to say that actually this rather nifty little pad and pen combination uh, probably guarantees it lots of very positive coverage. Uh, I'm going to introduce our first speakers in a second, but before we do, I just wanted to, I have a little bit of time to myself, and I wanted to issue not exactly a warning, more a sort of piece of friendly advice to some of the foreigners who've made the trip to visit us here and incidentally thank you very much. The reason why everyone's smiling is not just because of the centenary, people in Latvia are genuinely quite friendly whatever you may have heard elsewhere. But when I first came to Latvia, it was a, nearly 20 years ago, it was actually as a tourist. Uh, I'd been backpacking and hiking around a large part of uh, Eastern Europe and eventually I, I booked a really cheap ticket to come to Latvia and hike through the forests. Uh, my plane was due to arrive very, very late, just before midnight, and so I needed to sort out my first night's accommodation. Uh, I was really on a shoestring, um, so I'm interested in talking to some of the people who are providing for those sorts of uh, uh, tourists today. But I just needed this one night's accommodation, and then I would be able to uh, head off into the forest with my tent, my hiking boots, and that's all I required for a couple of weeks. Uh, I contacted a booking agency uh, and there happened to be a Latvian girl, a Latvian woman who was working at the agency. Uh, I thought she was very, very nice actually and she offered to book me a room for my first night's accommodation. I've got to admit, I, I didn't really listen much to what she was saying. I was kind of staring into her eyes a little bit and thinking, Latvian ladies are very nice. She booked me my first night's accommodation and when I arrived on my Ryanair flight to Riga, uh, got into the centre of, uh, of the city for the first time, I saw that she'd actually booked me a penthouse apartment in the most expensive hotel which had just opened in the centre of the old town. So I looked a bit silly walking in there with my hiking boots and my backpack. Uh, particularly going down to breakfast the next morning with all the high rollers all around off to their high-powered business meetings. Uh, the one night stay in the room cost me more than the rest of the holiday combined, but I did have a really great time and I met lots of lovely, friendly people so that when I went back to the UK, I went back to the booking agency and I had the feeling that this girl was a little bit homesick so I took my pictures to show her and we went out for a drink and now we've been married for 16 years. <laughs> and I still haven't got my money back. <laughs> True story. So foreign visitors, beware because in a few years time it might be you standing here. Now it's time to introduce our first real speaker. Uh, from the Ministry of Economics, we're delighted to welcome State Secretary Erix Eglitis. Please, Mr. Eglitis. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mike. It's, uh, it's a challenge, really, to take a microphone after your introduction. Uh, especially if I have to be the, the official opener of the event. But uh, let me try and go ahead. I am really, I'm pleasured and honored to welcome this, this splendid crowd in, in, in this splendid venue, because uh, as I understand, you are the representation of the, uh, of the tourism industry around the Baltic Sea. So uh, therefore, I really look forward 
that you will have two interesting and fruitful days. It was mentioned, these, these three words, creation, digitalization, and preservation, which are the, uh, the buzzwords in the tourism industry. And uh, these are the main themes in the forum this year. And the digitalization, the creation, and preservation, they are the terms which are also closely related to the three main objectives of the strategy of the Baltic Three. The, um, the uh, three themes there are connect the region, increase prosperity, and save the sea. Uh, first of all, the connecting the region is today happening mostly through the digitalization. So these things are very tightly uh, related to each other. So various digital solutions are, uh, are allowing us to jointly develop the products to market these products, to improve the, the speed of the information floating around, and uh, therefore also to make all the world much more aware of what we are doing here, and therefore uh, positioning this, this region uniquely as the tourism destination. The other thing, increasing the prosperity it is very, very much related to creating the opportunities through the tourism, because tourism is a cross-industrial, cross-sectoral uh, uh, thing, which, which goes through almost every aspect of, of, the, um, of the country where you are landing the tourism. It creates jobs, it, um, it develops new opportun opportunities uh, in the cities, and what we would like to see also more development in the regions. For example, in Latvia, the tourism has been growing steadily for 10% annually for several years. We are expecting to, to reach around 2 million tourists this year who will be spending more than a night here. Riga Airport is going to process most probably 7 million passengers this year, which is more than twice the population of the country. So uh, the, the tourism really creates a lot of such uh, opportunities and I hope that working together we can um, extend the success across all the, all the nations, all the countries connected by the Baltic Sea. And third, which is, uh, which is also very important and which was also addressed by Mike in, in his opening remarks, this preservation aspect because uh, saving the sea, which is the, the part of the strategy, and preservation, which is the theme of today's forum, they, they go very much together, because to, to the big extent, we, we can be thankful to Baltic Sea being the, the unique place in this area of the world, which is uh, attracting the tourists and attracting our customers. So, preserving this unique wildlife and, and fragile nature is the, the joint task which we needed to address. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's remember that we have these uh, shared interests and goals in developing the sustainable tourism products and increase the tourist flows for the whole region. And therefore, I'd like to encourage you to embrace uh, the new ideas and concepts which I'm, I'm sure will be expressed during the forum and to use the opportunity to exchange the thoughts and opinions to foster the uh, development in the future. And uh, another thing, of course, is, as I understand, the season is coming more or less to the end. So this is also an opportunity to celebrate the, uh, the end of, of the successful tourism season and have the wonderful time together. Uh, the philosopher William James uh, has once said that uh, uh, people, we are like islands in the sea, separate on the surface, but still connected in the depth. And this is very much true for the countries in the Baltic region. We are everyone unique and remarkable in their own way. At the same time, we are very tightly connected by the, uh, by the Baltic Sea, which unites us and we must stay connected in this way in order to achieve our goals, in order to develop further, in order to prosper in the long time. So to conclude, I'd like to wish you a very inspirational event. I bet that you will have it 
in the hands of very well uh, prepared moderator. Enjoy the time here and I hope that you will also have some time to enjoy the beautiful city even though the weather is as it should be in this season of the year. So thank you very much for your time around here and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eglitis. I've got to say I'm incredibly impressed by uh, quoting William James this early in the morning from the varieties of religious experience, if I'm not mistaken. Makes a change from Rhinus, usually tacked on to the end of a, a speech. Uh, now I have the great honor to invite to the stage one of our visitors from uh, overseas, Ms. Beata Schlupp, a German uh, politician and vice president of Landtag mecklenburg vorpommern uh, Ms. Schlupp, if you would please come to the stage. Thank you. Honorable Mr. Eklitis, dear speakers and participants of the 11th Baltic Sea and Latvian Tourism Forum, Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to speak today at this forum. As a member of the Baltic Sea Parliamentary Conference, the BSPC, I would like to send you the best greetings from the parliamentarians around the Baltic Sea. And as the first Vice President of the Parliament of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, you are especially greeted from our country. Tourism unites us. Tourism unites us today at this forum. Tourism unites, unites our people around the Baltic Sea. And tourism unites us with nature. So this conference is a perfect place to discuss our issues with stakeholders from all sectors. Governments, economy, non-government organizations, and even parliamentarians. Seeing the importance of tourism, the BSP launched the Working Group on Sustainable Tourism in the year 2015. The objective was to elaborate political positions and recommendations pertaining to sustainable tourism. After two years of intensive work, the Working Group was completed last year with the presentation of the final report in Hamburg. This report contains concrete political positions and recommendations pertaining to sustainable tourism. And it leads to stronger cooperation in the Baltic Sea region. One important step for fostering cooperation was the establishment of the Baltic Sea Tourism Center. This center is located in Rostock, enables a strong strategic connection between politics and the tourism economy with all its facilities. For the BSPC, the implementation of the Baltic Sea Tourism Center is a perfect tool to establish a hopefully long-running platform for information exchange, a voice for the interest of the tourism sector, and a supporter of sustainable tourism. To continue the sustainable tourism policy of the Baltic Sea Parliamentary Conference, Mrs. Sylvia Brettschneider, President of the Parliament, Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, and Mrs. Sarah Kemeter, Member of the Orland Parliament, were appointed as Rapporteurs for Sustainable Tourism in the Baltic Sea region. As a Rapporteur, it is possible to follow the political and economic development on this issue and to inform the BSPC parliamentarians. For us as parliamentarians, it is important that and how governments deal with our recommendations. So our first report on this from last August contains an analysis on the reactions and responses of the governments of our member states on the political positions and rec recommendations which, are, which were integrated in the 26th BSPC resolution. Furthermore, the report presents keystones and events of the last year and aims to inform on the state of sustainable tourism in the Baltic Sea region. 
best practices, challenges, and opportunities in sustainable tourism. The statements of the governments of the Baltic Sea region on the implementation of the 26th resolution also can be found on the BSPC website. Because the governments on the states and regions distributed their answers concerning the implementation of the 26th BSPC resolution, it is possible do, to inform on the implementation of the recommendations regarding sustainable tourism. Especially the following topics are relevant issues in the responses. A fact to be welcomed is that nearly all answers the governments respond to promote wastewater facilities at harbors in the Baltic Sea region and give certain information on the status of the implementation of these facilities, often with concrete details. To implement a more sustainable tourism, many governments adopted spe specific plans or ag agendas, also labeling and management systems. The topic of cooperation also plays some role in the answers of the governments. This is quite remarkable as the tourism sector is a comp competitive market and the struggle for own profit of companies and regions plays an important, plays the decisive role. But there are also paragraphs and issues which are evaluated differently between the governments. For example, concerning the recommendation to work towards the vision that Baltic Sea region will become the first eco-region in the world where ecology and economy work together in a balanced and integrated manner to sustain societies and culture and to counteract the lack of skilled workers. Ladies and gentlemen, for the parliamentarians of the Baltic Sea Parliamentary Conference, it is necessary to put sustainable tourism on the top of the policy agenda in the whole Baltic Sea region, as well as in our home par parliaments for the benefits of society. The worldwide increasing of travelers also around the Baltic Sea is in principle good news for the tourism sector. However, a main challenge is that tourism is often concentrated in a few destinations, especially where cities where citizens live and work and which therefore suffer from pressure on public infrastructure, housing costs and the environment. But the negative effects of this con concentration are not caused by tourism alone. What is often reduced to the simple wording of tourist overcrowding should also be linked to complex challenges such as population growth and rural exodus. To sustain tourism and its many benefits to all stakeholders alike, solutions are to be found in the diversification of the tourism offered throughout regions and seasons while giving back the cities to their residents and facilitating the creation of even more jobs and growth. It is therefore crucial to map the causes and consequences of over-tourism in our destinations and ensure that sustainable management of increasing tourism flows. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly I would like to focus on the latest EU ban on some single-use plastics. This is import an important success for the environment and the economy and in line with the recommendations of the BSPC. This is a large step towards sustainable tourism. The European Commission recently proposed a directive on the reduction of the impact of certain plastic products on the environment. Half of all marine litter items found on beaches in Europe represents two single-use plastics. In our 27th resolution, which we adopted at the end of August in the, on the Orland Islands, we have paid particular attention to urgent measures in the field of environmental protection. In doing so, we have addressed the increasing pollution and burden on the seas, in particular from plastic waste, calling for urgent action in this area, both for the Baltic Sea region and beyond 
to achieve the UN, UN's 2030 development goals as quickly as possible. We welcome all efforts to move towards a healthy and clean Baltic Sea. And we discussed this topic also two days ago in Trondheim at our standing committee meeting. It is necessary to support actions to reduce the impact on the environment. This is necessary to preserve Europe's tourism ecosystem and competitive advantage. Nevertheless, replacing single-use plastics will be a difficult task for many small hospitality businesses, which commonly use single-use drawers, plates, glasses, food containers, and cutlery in particular for takeaway food services and external catering events. Ladies and gentlemen, together with all the stakeholders, we have achieved a lot and will continue our work along the principles that sustainability is the guiding principle and will be the standard practice in all types of tourism in the Baltic Sea region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Schlup, and uh, it's good to be able to report that uh, uh, with regard to waste plastics, the uh, Latvian Parliament recently uh, approved a ban on uh, single-use plastic bags from next year with a variety of other uh, plastic use packaging and so on getting phased in over the, the year afterwards, so uh, Latvia seems to be uh, part of this uh, long overdue uh, tide as well, of which more very, very shortly. Um, but the final one of our trio of uh, welcoming speakers is uh, Ine Sushirava, who's director of the tourism department at Latvia's Investment and Development Agency. So Ine, uh, if you would care to join me on the stage. Dear guests of Joint Baltic Sea Region Tourism Forum and Latvian Tourism Forum, dear friends, dear colleagues from tourism industry, in 2017, Europe was the most frequently visited region in the world. Key issues keeping the travel industry on the toys of the over -tourism, are over-tourism and sustainability. In light of the growing number of international travelers, destination management organizations are seeking innovative methods to disperse visitors within destinations. The sharing economy is often mentioned as a potential solution uh, to the problem of crowding uh, within city centers and popular tourist areas. Thanks to the uh, businesses like Airbnb, which are opening suburban neighborhoods to tourism. However, this has affected rental markets and caused local residents to express dissatisfaction. And once again, left the industry questioning whether this is sustainable. Because of these global trends and constant growth in tourism, it's becoming harder to capture and preserve the local experience the essence of destinations and the spirit of the place that gives the city, country and regions their distinctive feel. Therefore, the question is also whether to invest in preservation or the creation of new tourism products to attract the right kind of visitors. Should destinations still be focused on marketing or rather reassigning their budgets towards destination management and preservation? Digital tools can help in preservation attempts as, as well as attracting the attention of the right kind of visitor. But is their potential being embraced to its full extent? Many stakeholders are struggling to keep up with changing trends and the constant evolution of digital solutions. How can we support each other to ensure that the Baltic Sea region 
is well and truly a smart destination, making um, sensible use of digital tools uh, to make the visitor experience smoother and more enjoyable, yet authentic. It's our belief uh, that the key, um, so key uh, we believe that um, the key to success lies in the cooperation of all stakeholders. By joining forces, we stand a better chance of combating the issues affecting tourism today, ensuring a sustainable future for the Baltic Sea region. We are proud of existing cross-border projects such as Greenways, a pan-European uh, project giving a new lease of life uh, to old uh, railways by transforming them into a cycle paths, Interreg projects such as the Industrial Heritage Project in Estonia and Latvia with the aim of reviving industrial heritage for tourism development. And yesterday we launched a new Interreg project um, which will try to create uh, new tourism products in creative tourism sector, uh, combining tourism and creative industries. It's also inspiring to see industries working together to drive, to, to, uh, to drive tourism. Uh, we've seen the effects of slush in Helsinki outside the traditional leisure travel season. In Riga, Digital, Freedom Festival, Tech Chill and other initiatives are following its path. With a whole host of inspiring speakers in this year's agenda, uh, it's our hope that the forum will spark new ideas uh, to solve today's challenges and encourage true action. Thank you for joining us in this historic occasion, the first ever joint Baltic Sea Region um, and Latvian Tourism Forum, which in itself serves an example of successful cooperation. May the following two days bring a wealth of fresh ideas and actionable insights, which can be put into practice to ensure a stable future for the tourism industry in the Baltic Sea region. And thank you for being here and have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ines. Now, before we move on to our keynote speaker, who I'm very much looking forward to uh, hearing, someone who has a real reputation for uh, uh, very invigorating and interesting uh, public speaking, we have a little surprise. I'd like to summon to the stage uh, Martin Schengelis, uh, who is responsible uh, for helping to organize uh, this event. Uh, Angelis, of course, means angel. And so he will be, as an administering angel, he has an angelic surprise. If you'd care to come to the stage, please, Martin. <clears throat> Ancient Latvians used barter a lot. And if you don't know what barter is, it is a system that is used when someone gives a product or an item to someone else and receives something back or expects to receive something back. For ancient Latvians, there was one thing, though, one single item we always used as a gift. Thus influenced from this uh, old traditional uh, recipe of uh, housewarming or guest keeping, we wanted to give a gift to all participants on the stage today. And uh, in a gift, we wanted to give this little tiny item. And this little tiny item is an ethnographic mittens. So every single person who comes here on stage today will receive these mittens so hopefully they do not suffer from laughing autumn because they usually get very terrible. So uh, Beate, could you please come and receive the very first gift from us? Thank you very much. This is the ladies size, we also have bigger. And he wants to get someone, something bad back, and I have something for him. <laughs> Hope you all have something to give him. Thank you very much. Please enjoy the event. Ah, oh, yeah, one photo.
Thank you, Martin. It makes us almost sad that it's not so cold today. Um, but there is a, a, an initiative to wear your Latvian ethnographic mittens next week on November the 18th, Independence Day. So hopefully, even if you're not a, a recipient of one today, you can dig them out from the wardrobe and we can all... Uh, we can all wear them. I mean, it does impede your applause a little bit, but apart from that, they're fantastic.